Hey guys, welcome to a new video. I'm Mike. I'm a mechanical and aerospace engineer who just graduated from the university at Buffalo, and today we are going to be playing some Kerbal Space Program. Now, immediately what you can see is that this isn't normal KSP. See, what we're playing here is a very... Uh, it's a more difficult version of KSP. So the main difficulty mods we're going to be running is uh, the Je Ne Sais Quoi mod, which is a 2.5x multiplier, and planet kind of alteration mod. So... What we are going to be doing is we're going to be playing a science mode with a couple modifications. First of all, we're going to be bumping science rewards up by just a little bit, just to make it a touch easier. We are going to be disabling allowing reverting flights. We're going to enable require signal for control, plasma blackout. Uh, we're going to say resource transfer obeys crossfeed rules. We're going to say part pressure and part g-force limits, as well as carbon g-force limits. And we are going to enable... Not enable... Or yes, we're going to enable Kerbal experience. We're going to have FMRS enabled. We're going to increase the stage delay. Uh... We're going to set lifetime radiation on. Oh, and we're I don't remember if I mentioned this, but we're playing with Kerbalism as well. We're going to enable lifetime radiation on that. So Kerbalism is a comprehensive life support mod. It includes things like food, water, oxygen, nitrogen, um, consumption. You have to have power, parts will break. If you don't have a high quality engine, you'll the main lifter stages will probably only be able to fire once or twice at maximum. So you have engine ignition limits. We don't have eulage though. I don't think I'm gonna add that in because that's just kind of annoying. Which is basically you have to make sure your fuel will settle down at the bottom of your engines before you light it, or else that can cause issues as they do in real life. Um I'm just going through our stuff and just seeing what's up. Okay. Oh. And just so we don't have to get through the basic things, I'm just going to do a quick increase in the amount of science we start with, if I can find it. Da 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 da. No? Okay, whatever. That's fine, I'll just add a little bit. Nope, not overriding that. And we're going to name this our... Uh, gonna name this our YouTube playthrough. And start. Cool. Is this recording or not? Okay, cool. And just let that load. Bada bing, bada boom. Cool. So, we're not playing career mode, that's just... It's fun, I like it, it's just kind of tedious. I just want to showcase different... missions, basically. So here we are. We are with our basic unpressurized Mark 1 command pod. And so our goal for this is to basically get in orbit for this first mission or for this first episode, that is. So uh, we're going to see if that's possible. If not, uh, it is what it is. So we'll have our science, we'll have our goop. Er, no. No, those are both Mr. Goos. Oops. I have a bunch of mods installed. 
Um, I'm going to leave that in the description. A giant list of all the mods I use, or at least I'm going to try to, because I have a lot of them. So, yeah. So this first mission, what we are going to do is we're going to load in. Come on. And then we are going to do a crew report. We're going to EVA. I'm going to do a EVA report. I'm going to do a surface sample. We're going to board. We're going to take one mystery goo. And then we are going to launch. And then we're going to go this way towards the 90 degree marker. So hopefully we end up in a new biome, aka the ocean. Because the more science we get here, it's just going to be a little bit easier. Are we going to get there? Mm, maybe, maybe not. Uh, and for those of you wondering, I'm running Scatterer as well as Environmental Visual Enhancements to get these clouds and the uh, prettier sunset and whatever. So I'm just going to time warp. So this was a pretty basic mission. We're going to grab our mystery goo. Oh. What I should have done is we're going to pop our chute. I'm going to set that. And then we're going to come down. Just waiting, waiting. Come on. Beautiful chute deploy. Nice and stable. We can EVA. We can take our data. We can do a new crew report. We can dump that into the pod. We can do another crew report because we took the data and we stored it. And then we're just going to come down for our splash landing, which is excellent because that's more science that we can get. So. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to orbit today, but uh, we're just going to see. Yeah. So we took our mystery goo there. We have our EVA report. We have our surface sample. Cool. And then we're going to recover. And that is the end of our first mission. Pretty simple. Everyone knows how to do that. It's the same if you're playing stock, if you're playing je ne sais quoi, if you're playing whatever, like real scale solar system. Actually, no, that's going to be different because I have uh, different progression mods like RP0, but we're not doing that. So this is going to be stock. Oh, shouldn't have done that. I have to go to the R&D center so we can get new science. So we can get new parts and hopefully get a little bit closer to reaching our goal of orbiting. So we're going to get basic rocketry, of course. We're going to get uh, engineering 101. We're going to get general rocketry. We're going to get survivability. We're going to get stability. And that's about all we can get from here. Cool. Sorry about that. Uh, we're going to jump into the vehicle assembly building now. And we're going to get rid of this because that's, that's not good. So what we have is we have a decoupler. We have a thermal system. Um, I don't remember what this is. It's like a radial heat shields, I believe. So we're going to have our heat shield, a decoupler. We're going to get our abort system. We also have an abort system mod. But first we need our chutes. Can plonk that on top. Cool. I also have the... It's a SpaceX pack. Um, I'm kind of blanking on the name, but like I said, again, these are all going to be down in the description. 
for your uh, convenience. So, no, not that part. I'm gonna take a small stack to couple her. We're gonna grab the Mothra fuel tank based off the Falcon 1. And we are going to grab our Marlin 1C. So the thing about uh, the Je ne sais quoi mod is because it is a two and a half times planet pack, that means our delta V has increased by the square root of two and a half, which means instead of needing about 3,000 meters per second square to reach orbit, we need roughly between four to six kilometers per second. So we're kind of below that. So we are going to try our best. We might need some external boosters already because of this. This was designed to take uh this mod is designed for stock Kerbal Space Grab Kerbal Space Program. I am not using any fuel modifications. I'm not using anything that'll like alter the fuel to oxidizer ratio or anything like that, like Smurf does for real scale solar system. Uh, without the real fuels mod, or like real fuels will do for RSS RO. So we're just going to adjust that. We can adjust our thrust limiter to make this center core last a bit longer. We're going to put on some more science units here, something like that. We got our barometer, we got our thermometer, and we're just going to name this um, orbit question mark, because I'm not sure if this will make orbit. I don't remember. It's been a little bit since I've played like this. So, yeah, I don't know what else to say. Um, if there is anything you would like to talk, for me to talk about, just leave that in the comments, of course. I'd be more than happy to share experiences and whatever, but actually let's talk about that right now. I got Kerbal Space Program back in 2015. And honestly, it is one of the main reasons I'm like here today with a Bachelor's of Science in Aerospace and Mechanical Engineering. This game has given me so much oversight and like, not really oversight, but like inspiration to basically do this. But I'd be remiss in saying that is the only game I've played. I actually started playing back in 2008, watching my brother play Fallout 3, playing Minecraft, playing Portal 2. Basically, I have a lot of gaming to thank for where I am today, honestly. It's gotten me through college, it's gotten me through high school, because shit's hard. Oh, yeah. It's just like a way to relax, you know? I don't know. So, here we are. We're going up up, we're just gonna... Oh, okay, okay, Kraken. We're not gonna do that, apparently, because I don't have struts yet. Cool. I almost exploded there. That's nice. And we're just gonna come up on booster separation and booster engine cutoff in a few minutes here. Actually, I realized I didn't set a command for the abort. Uh, probably should. It's fine. We don't have reverse on. It's probably fine. So, we have an apoapsis of about 100 kilometers here. We're going to do a crew report from the upper atmosphere. We're going to do a mystery goo from the upper atmosphere. And we're going to do a temp from the upper atmosphere. Sweet. Our I cut the engines, so right now we're coasting. I'm going to separate our stages. Ignite that. 
see from the Kerbalism mod, we have this new reliability tab here, and we have an engine remaining burn time of 3 minutes 20-ish seconds and 5 ignitions remaining. So basically what that's saying is I can burn this engine for another 3 minutes or 5... Oh, no, never mind. Well, it's saying I can burn it for a total of 3 minutes 12 seconds before we start to run the risk of it failing, or we can ignite it five more times before we risk it failing. And that'll either make it so I have to go without EVA to fix it, or that I have to go out, or it's just not repairable at all. And that's kind of the interesting part of the je ne sais quoi uh, Kerbalism experience. Because you have to like plan your missions out a little bit more than you would have in stock KSP. But it it is what it is, you know. We are just collecting our signs here. And then we are going to try and get into a stable orbit. Uh we have two point six kilometers a second of velocity right now. We need to get up to about 4,000, I believe. Actually, we can just go ahead and make a maneuver node and just see what it says. And we need 12 kilometers. Okay, cool. So this is actually is going to make orbit. Sweet. Um, what can I talk about? What can I talk about? I don't know. So, how are your guys' days going? Are you enjoying your summer? If you have off, what do you do? If you're working, leave that in the description. You can just chat, whatever. Um, I don't know. We're just cruising here. We are just cruising here. Am I gonna do this real time? I don't know. Probably gonna cut some stuff out. If not, uh, just kind of depends on what I have going on right now. So, as you guys know, the current economy isn't doing too hot, which is kind of why I'm. I'm not doing this for the money, I'm just doing this to relax, and so I don't look like a crazy person talking to myself down here in my basement. But I do have a job coming up, I'm going to be working at Target, which isn't... Eh, is basically just going to be some money. Pocket money, investing money, whatever, what have you. I mean, am, am I saying I'm too good for retail? Obviously not. It's just, it isn't what I planned on me doing, on me doing post graduation. But the average time for engi an engineer to get a job post graduation, from what I've heard, is about six months. Which it's only been a month, so I'm not losing hope. I just want some extra money. And obviously, with the current economic situation, it could be longer than that. It's probably gonna be longer than that. Which is why I'm doing this job here. So I can just have like a little bit of spending money so I can buy the dip on like Spy and Vu and whatever. So this is an obviously going to be like a tutorial. This is just going to be me playing through Kerbal Space Program. I'm going to try to get to the Mun. I'm going to try to get to Minmus and just kind of see how it goes. See if you guys like this. If you want me to, to do tutorials, you can tell me that in the description. I can do like a docking tutorial. I could do a space station tutorial in this bigger environment. But pretty much if you know how to play Kerbal Space Program, you can play Kerbal Space Program with Je ne sais quoi. It's just a bit of a learning step because 
you have to make your rockets bigger, and you have to have more fuel, and you're not going to get as big payloads. Like, if I tried to make a giant, like, spaceship carrier, kind of like you see Marcus House and uh, Matt Lown do, I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to be able to do that in this bigger environment, but that's going to be coming later when I have more science, more infrastructure, blah blah blah. If you want to see that, let me know. And here we are coming up on our splashdown from our very first Kerbin orbit. Sorry. So, if you like this, leave a like. If you loved it, make sure to hit that subscribe button for the YouTube algorithm. And as we come and splash down, I would like you I would like to thank you very much for watching. And we're just going to wait to splash down and collect our science. And then we are going to call this an episode. We're just going to recover our vessel. Collect our 150 science points that we can assign next time. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye.